chat GPT and artificial intelligence represent a lot of things to a lot of people. And in the world of teaching and learning, educators recognize that this probably represents a new set of skills that students deserve the chance to develop so that they have a solid foundation to pursue emerging opportunities. As we begin to explore exactly what ChatGPT is capable of, the most defining skill seems to be prompting. How well you prompt the machine has a direct correlation to the quality of the product that you get back. We can see this in action with lesson plans. ChatGPT would be happy to write your lesson plans for you, but if you feed it uninspired prompts, you'll most definitely get uninspired returns. But if you have a vision for a quality lesson, you can rely on ChatGPT to do the legwork and let you focus on higher order revision through prompting. Here are five prompts you can focus on to get higher quality lesson plans. Starting with standards will give you more specific results for your lesson plans. You could always ask, write me based on this standard. You'll get better results than if you just asked for a lesson plan based on a topic. Um, and I even have a focus statement that I can include here. But even giving ChatGPT a standard to focus on, I'm still gonna get some semi-dry results in terms of a lesson plan, not the highest quality. Um, it will probably give me some ideas that I could build on, but I wouldn't just take this lesson plan and use it as it is. Um, so what I could do instead is I could use those standards to focus and have ChatGPT write some essential questions that we can build on. So let's try that. And I want to be able to choose from some options, so I'm going to have ChatGPT write me five control questions based on the standard. Let's see what it comes up with. purpose of using repetition and conditionals and algorithms, how do repetition and conditionals enhance creative expression to contribute to problem solving, can you provide examples, how do you determine the appropriate use, what are some of the best practices for defining repetition and conditionals and algorithms for program design. And those are all right. Um, let's say I want to focus on problem solving, so I'm going to choose number two. Now I could uh, change the wording a little bit of my prompt and maybe get some better results. Maybe I could say uh, write me five central questions uh, based on this standard, and then I can say focus on real world applications, and that will probably change the results that I get a little bit. So now that question that I liked before, how do repetition and conditionals enhance creative expression or contribute to problem solving? Um, it includes phrasing for real world scenarios, and I could do that myself, but I might get some results in here that I wouldn't think of on my own. Or maybe I get results that change my, or in, inspire me to think a little bit differently and come up with my own central question or a revision of one of these essential questions. So I'm gonna go with number want to know how to assess student understanding of this standard and this essential question. So let's see what ChatGPT has to say about it. Uh, give me five possible ways to assess written quiz or exam is pretty uninspired or practical assessment. Students can be given a project or a task that requires the use of repetition and conditionals to solve a real world problem. This will allow the assessor to observe their understanding and ability to apply the concepts. So I like that application piece. Discussions, presentations, a portfolio. Um, so again, I could re-prompt the machine to give me different results with a little bit of rephrasing, maybe I could just say creative ways, see if that amps up the 
hands-on, I could say hands-on ways, um, game-based assessment, scenario-based assessment, simulation-based assessment. So these are all a little bit more creative than just writing or taking a quiz or giving a presentation. Um, this is pretty similar to the, the one I like from the previous one, but I'm going to go with number two. So we can take this a step further. Let's go number two. Now that's great, and we would lose a lot of time as teachers creating a rubric for this assessment, but ChatGPT can help us with that too. Um, create a rubric. Let's see what we get that it pulled the information from that list of five and it creates a table for me with the criteria and how uh, each criteria is met at each level. Results. Now we haven't actually written any lesson plan yet. So at this point I could say you know, write me a lesson plan based on all this stuff, right? But ChatGPT can also incorporate um, lesson plan frameworks. For example, the 5e framework, we could have ChatGPT write a lesson plan for. So let's have all of this information uh, be used to write a 5e lesson plan. So you can see that ChatGPT can incorporate a, a lesson plan framework like the 5e framework to uh, restructure the lesson plan that it generates. So if I had just asked for a lesson plan, it would have given me something a little bit more dry, a little bit more call and response, whereas now I have it uh, put in this, this 5e framework. Um, and I could take every piece of this lesson plan that is generated and reprompt for even better results. For example, in the engagement section, I could ask um, ChatGPT to use a thinking routine. One powerful way to take advantage of ChatGPT while you're using it to lesson plan is to prompt it for examples. Every time it gives you an outline of something to do with students, you can prompt it to provide examples of, of what that might look like and what you might share directly with students, or even examples of what student responses might look like so that you can prepare for the questions that might come up during the lesson. You can prompt it for examples of everything, and that way you're not just being given a lesson plan and left on your own to, to backfill all the resources and, and what you plan to say, you have a rich list of examples that you can use. And maybe they're not everything you need, but they at the very least give you a great starting point to take your research and find very specific things that you can use with students, whether those be articles or videos. Uh, it removes a lot of the heavier thinking. Once you have a complete lesson plan full of assessments, essential questions, standards, all of that stuff, you can go back and revise it for any lens that you want to more closely address. If you want to find ways to incorporate technology into the lesson more meaningfully, you can go back and ask ChatGPT how it would modify the lesson to incorporate more technology. You could do that with collaboration. If you wanted to 
increase the level of engagement or if you had a specific idea or even a specific set of physical materials in your classroom that you wanted to incorporate. You can go back and ask ChatGPT to make revision suggestions based on, on any factor, any, any resource, any idea, any framework that you want to include.